Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are into Go Math uh, Chapter 12, and we've moved a little bit beyond just solving with numbers, and now we want to start processing numbers a little bit. So let me move this out of the way. Uh, today we're going to start talking about statistical questions, and specifically data. Now, data is a word that most of you are familiar with. Uh, you tend to think of it as like files or pieces of information, and that's exactly what it is. Data is a set of information. Now, this information can be numbers, it can be uh, people, it could be pictures, anything like that. So when we talk about like computer data, it's typically some sort of file or picture, you know, like we've talked about. But today, we're going to be talking about statistical data in reference to numbers, okay? So now, we're going to start by asking ourselves specific questions. So when we start discussing statistics, Statistics is how we understand a set of numbers, right? So we're going to be talking about things like mean, median, and mode. Well, if there are three people, Mr. W being one of them, and I'm 37, and the next person is 12, and the other person is 12, right? So we have two people who is 12. We'd say, well, there's 37, 12, and 12. Well, statistically, I can make that kind of fit what I want. Right? So you would say, well, if we just grab those three people, clearly, you're probably going to get somebody who's 12. Right? So that's the number that occurs most often. That's the mode. And we'll dig a little deeper into that. Well, if you average them together, well, let's, let's take the highest and the lowest, and we realize, well, the middle, or the median, is 12. You'd say, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, there's three people. They're, they're about 12-ish. They're but we have this one weird outlier out here. It's 37. And so we end up with 37 plus 24 is 61. When I divide by 3, I end up with 20 and 1 third. The average age of those three people is 20 and 1 third. Well, you might say, well, that doesn't make any sense, Mr. W. So <laughs> why would you say that? Well, because that's true. That's the average age between those three people. I have an outlier. I have something that doesn't fit. So we're going to program our statistics a little bit, and we have to start by asking the right questions. So the first thing that we want to ask about is a statistical question. Now, a statistical question, statistical question. A statistical question is one that can change over time. So if we said, how many bagels did Mr. W eat this morning? That's not a statistical question. That's one thing of data, right? We have one piece of data. If we want to extend that and we go, well, how many bagels does Mr. W eat on average over a period of 30 days? Well, now we have lots of points of data, right, that we can analyze and we get a much better picture. So just like our age example previously, we want to make sure we're asking statistical questions and not just pieces of information. Because you could say, well, Mr. W ate 37 bagels this morning. And we went, that's amazing. That dude eats 37 bagels every morning. Well, no, he doesn't. He just ate them this morning. And then he got sick and he fell into a food coma. But every morning, he typically eats one. So what is a better representation? When we're talking about numbers and truth, we want to talk about statistical questions so that we can get an accurate picture of what our data is representing. So, the New England Aquarium in Boston is home to over 80 penguins. Which of the following is a statistical question a biologist could ask about penguins? And we want to always explain our reasoning. So, remember, statistical question happens over time. I need several points of data that can vary. So, how much does a penguin named Pip weigh this morning? Well, this is not a statistical question because how much Pip the one penguin weighs this one morning is not several points of data. So it's not a statistical question because if we look at Pip and maybe Pip's obese and we go, wow, that penguin weighs 1,200 pounds. I've never seen anything like it. You wouldn't represent most penguins as weighing 1,200 pounds. So it's not a good representation of data. It's picking and choosing. But how much does the penguin named Pip weigh each morning on 30 different days. Well, now we get an average look at Pip's weight, and we get a better idea, right? All of a sudden, 
pip drops a lot of weight or he gains a lot of weight, that's going to throw off our data. It's not going to be as accurate as it was. So we need a big scope to get a good picture, right? Let's take a look at one more over here. Bongos. Bongos are, a, this is the animal, not the instrument, kind of antelope that live in Central Africa. And bongos are unusual because both males and females have horns. We're going to write two statistical questions a biologist could ask about a group of bongos. Okay, so looking at my statistical question. So I need something. Would I say, how many stripes does that bongo have? No. I need something that's going to be a lot of different pictures, right? So what is the length in inches of the horns on the bongo that has the most or the longest, maybe we could ask, right? So let's say the longest horns in the group. So I'm looking for the length of the longest. And in order to find that, I need to analyze all the different lengths of horns in the bongo group. And then I can get a good picture of the longest, right? Different bongos will have different horn lengths. This question asked about a value in a set of data that does vary. So it is a statistical question, right? We want things that we have to take a number of different pieces of data from in order to represent it. Now, out of these two, we are going to identify the statistical question. And yes, my, there it goes. Identify the statistical question. What was the low temperature in Chicago each day in March? Or what was March, excuse me, or what was the low temperature in Chicago on March 7th? One of these is a statistical question and one of them wasn't. So ask yourself, how many points of data would I need to figure this out in March? Well, each day in March, well, unless I'm talking about February, every month I'm going to need 30 to 31 points of data, right? Let's say we're going to need 31 points of data to figure that one out. What was the low temperature in Chicago on March 7th? I need one point of data. So which of these is not a statistical question? B. It only takes one point of data. It's one question. Statistics are best represented when they have lots and lots of points of data talking about the same thing. Okay, so I don't care whether you're talking about um, average age of people in a group or we're talking about uh, the amount of ice in the Arctic, right? If we're discussing something like climate change, people go, well, that climate change, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't think that that's really a thing because today it's negative 20. Sure, but yesterday it was 60. So your representation today doesn't represent the overall picture. So we need to look at, okay, well, what does the data tell us over 100 years? Now we get a more accurate picture, and we can make a better assessment of that data. Okay, so we're talking about data, which is chunks of information, in this case specifically numbers. And we're talking about statistical questions, and our statistical question requires multiple points of data.